In this video, we will show that in a metric space, open balls are open and closed balls are closed. First, we review some definitions. Let M be a metric space with metric D. For a point X in M and a positive real number R, we say that the open ball centered at X in M with radius R is the set of all points y in the metric space M that are less than distance r from x. The closed ball centered at x in the metric space M with radius r is the set of all points y in M that are distance at most r from x. We now review the definition of open and closed subsets of a metric space. Suppose X is a subset of the metric space M. We then say that X is open in M if for each point X in the subset X, there is a positive real number epsilon such that the open ball of radius epsilon centered at the point X is completely contained in the subset X. We say that X is closed in M if its complement in M is open. Note that even though we've called this subset an open ball and this subset a closed ball, we still have to show that they are open and closed subsets of M respectively. We will now prove that in a metric space M, open balls are open and closed balls are closed. First we show that open balls are open. So let M be a metric space with metric D. Let X be a point in M. Let R be a positive real number. We want to show that the open ball of radius R centered at X is an open subset of the metric space M. So let's prove this proposition. Recall that from the definition of an open subset to show that this open ball is an open subset of the metric space M, we need to show that for each point Y in the open ball, there exists a positive real number epsilon such that the open ball of radius epsilon centered at Y is contained in the open ball of radius R centered at X. We note that this open ball is non-empty because it includes the point X. First, we show that this statement holds for the point X itself. This is case one. We have that X is in the open ball of radius R centered at X. That is of course equal to itself, so it's certainly contained in itself. So if we set epsilon to be equal to R in this case, then we've established that this statement holds for the point X. If X is the only point in this open ball, we are done. So now assume Y is a point in this open ball that's not equal to the point x. Then the distance from x to y is greater than zero. This is a positive real number that we will denote by d. The distance from x to y is also less than r because we're assuming that y lies in the open ball of radius r centered at x. So d is less than r. Let epsilon be equal to r minus d. This is a positive real number. We now claim that the open ball of radius epsilon centered at y is contained in the open ball of radius r centered at x, where epsilon is equal to r minus d. If we can establish this, we have shown that this open ball is an open subset of M. We now prove the claim with the help of the following figure. 
Suppose Z is an arbitrary point in the open ball of radius epsilon centered at Y. So Z perhaps is a point here. We need to show that the distance from X to Z is less than R. So this gray line here is the distance from X to Z. We have that the distance from X to Z is less than or equal to the distance from x to y plus the distance from y to z. This is just coming from the triangle inequality for metric spaces. Now note, and using this diagram for assistance, that the distance from x to y is equal to d and the distance from y to z is less than epsilon. So we have that the distance from x to z, that's this distance here, is less than d plus epsilon. But if we go up here, we have that epsilon is equal to r minus d. So if we add d to both sides of this equality, we just get that d plus epsilon is equal to r. So we've shown that the distance from x to z is less than r. So we've shown that the point Z lies in the open ball of radius R centered at X. But as, as Z was an arbitrary point in this open ball, the open ball of radius epsilon centered at Y, it follows that the entire open ball of radius epsilon centered at Y is contained in the open ball of radius R centered at X. So what we've shown, we've shown that the open ball of radius R centered at X is open in the metric space M. So open balls in metric spaces are open subsets. We will now show that closed balls are closed in metric spaces. So let M be a metric space again with the metric D, let X be a point in M, and let R be a positive real number. We claim that the closed ball of radius R centered at X is a closed subset of the metric space M. Recall that a subset of a metric space is closed if its complement is open. So we need to show that the complement of this closed ball in M is open we may assume that this subset is non-empty because the empty set is always vacuously open in a metric space. So if this subset were empty, it would be an open subset of M and therefore its complement, the closed ball of radius R centered at X, would be a closed subset of M. So let Y be a point in this complement. Recall that to show that this complement is open, it suffices to show that for this arbitrary point Y, there exists a positive real number epsilon such that the open ball of radius epsilon centered at this point Y is contained within this subset. As Y is outside of the closed ball of radius R centered at X, we must have that the distance from x to y is greater than r. Once again, we denote this distance by d. Now, let epsilon be equal to d minus r. This is going to be a, a positive real number. We claim that the open ball of radius epsilon centered at y is contained in this complement, where epsilon is given by d minus r. To prove this claim, it is enough to show that an arbitrary point z in this open ball is contained in this complement. As before, we shall prove this claim with the help of this diagram. We have the closed ball of radius r centered at x 
and an arbitrary point z in the open ball of radius epsilon centered at y. We need to show that the distance from x to the point z is greater than r. That will then be equivalent to z lying in this complement. To show that this holds, we will make use of the triangle inequality once more, this time on this triangle. We have that the distance from x to y is less than or equal to the distance from x to z plus the distance from z to y. We first take the distance from z to y from both sides of this inequality to give us that the distance from x to z is greater than or equal to the distance from x to y minus the distance from z to y. Now we know that the distance from x to y is just d because we defined that here and the distance from z to y is less than epsilon. This is because z is contained in the open ball of radius epsilon centered at y. So as epsilon is greater than the distance from z to y, it follows that this expression is greater than d minus epsilon. But from rearranging this equality here, we have that d minus epsilon is simply equal to r. So we've shown that the distance from x to z is greater than r. This means that z lies in this complement. And as z was an arbitrary point in this open ball, it follows that the entire open ball is contained in this complement. So we have that this complement is an open subset of the metric space M. And that means that the closed ball of radius R centered at X is a closed subset in M because we've established that its complement is open in M. So we've shown that closed balls in metric spaces are closed.